On Monday the 21st of February 2022, Zelda's extremely underwhelming 35th anniversary officially comes to a close. And we're a little upset about it. Nintendo had one final chance to shadow drop a Zelda release at the recent Direct, and alas, the series wasn't even mentioned once. So we've all got to pull our big kid pants up and just accept that we're not going to get anything else. In this video, we're going to talk about the reasons why this particular 35th was a little lacklustre, especially when you compare it to a certain Red Plumbers one. And we'll also discuss what we all had hoped to receive, but didn't get this year. But don't go anywhere because all of that hope is not yet lost. Don't forget to join the Sun Kind of community by smashing that subscribe button for all of your Nintendo content. And if you do like this video, then hitting that like button really helps us out a lot too. In order to understand just how disappointing Zelda's 35th was, we've first got to take a look at how good Mario's 35th was, which took place the year before in 2020. Where do we even start with this? We got so many things. How about with the most random, unrelated to video game stuff? This just really drives home for me how big a deal this thing was. The amount of interest from companies outside of the video game industry really solidifies how much support there was for Mario's 35th anniversary. I feel like the clothing industry is as good a place to start as any. We anticipated Nintendo might have released some apparel in celebration of their favourite child's birthday, but other big name companies such as Levi and Puma getting involved seem to have come a bit out of left field for us. We got tees, overalls, hoodies and basketball shoes. We also got a few toys and while they're not video games, they're definitely more gamey than some other things we got. Lego released this awesome Mario themed set and Hasbro teamed up with the plumber in order to churn out a few Mario style monopolies. We own the Mario Kart one and can confirm that they play a lot different to regular Monopoly and they are arguably more fun. We also got a number of other extremely random things like some adhesives company putting Mario characters on their glue sticks. Yeah, we know. But our personal favourite would have to be Coldstone Creamery releasing a number of Mario inspired ice creams and shakes. They had a Rainbow Road ice cream cake and oh man it made me wish I lived in America. Games and ice cream are literally like my two favourite things. Oh, um, other than Laura of course. And now we can finally get into the actual video game stuff, of which Mario got no less than six of. 3D All-Stars was, surprise surprise, an All-Star collection of 3D Mario platformers, Galaxy, Sunshine and 64. This was a limited time release being removed from the eShop on March 31st, 2021. Interesting considering this was the biggest release that we got. Hey, at least you can still find physical copies of 3D All-Stars floating around because the Battle Royale platformer, aptly titled Super Mario Bros 35, was a digital only game that also got scrapped on March 31st. The internet even dubbed this day Kill Mario Day. You've got to love the internet sometimes, don't you? We got a new Paper Mario game and the absolutely fantastic Bowser's Fury addition to 3D World, which was ported over to the Switch. I mean, cats. Who doesn't want more cats with their Mario? Mario Kart Live was also released that year. And yes, you could definitely say this was a toy, but it is certainly unplayable without the Switch. So it's a video game. And then finally, we got something that Zelda did also receive, a Game & Watch console. This little blast from the past is for the collectors out there. And while running some classic era games, also works as a clock. They were hugely popular in the 80s. And these re-releases, while seemingly a little pointless, are really cool. Pointless, they have three games on them. Yeah, but they're all available on the Nintendo Switch Online system. We don't mean for this to become a Mario 35th video, but it is important to note just how big a deal Nintendo made of it. He even got his very own limited edition Mario Red Switch console. One of the biggest additions to the Star Child's anniversary, probably. Now we are definitely aware that Mario is 100% Nintendo's biggest mascot, and he has come a very long way since his humble beginnings of jumping over barrels in Donkey Kong. Mario Kart 
is the highest selling Switch game after all. So I think we speak for everyone when we say that we didn't expect there to be Zelda milkshakes or lunchboxes for this 35th. But with the amount of love Mario got, we for sure thought Zelda might at least get a few things. It got two. We already mentioned the Game & Watch, which is definitely very cool, but we do understand why a lot of people just don't care about it. It is quite a niche item. But apart from that, the only other thing we were treated to was Skyward Sword HD. Don't get us wrong, we're grateful we got anything at all, but it just pales in comparison. Skyward Sword is a good game, but it is one of the most linear Zelda titles out there, in both story and dungeon design. Look, it's not exactly the best Zelda game, is it? In fact, it's probably among the worst. But the worst of the best is still pretty good, right? Nintendo did do a pretty good job with updating the controls to make it playable without motion, and it was of course obviously brought into HD. Alongside this release, we also got a pair of limited edition Zelda Joy-Cons, the Hylian Shield and Master Sword respectively. These are definitely our favourite looking Joy-Cons, the blues are so nice. Now we did get one other Zelda game come to the Switch in 2021. Ocarina of Time was released alongside a slew of other Nintendo 64 games as part of the online service expansion pack. I personally don't think this had anything to do with the anniversary at all, but it was another Zelda release I guess. Now there were a few rumours floating around that Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask might be ported to the Switch in the form of their 3D versions from the 3DS, possibly as some kind of double pack. But with the 64 being added to Nintendo Switch Online service, it's abundantly clear why that didn't happen. We were getting them there instead. One of the things we failed to mention that Mario got for his 35th that we would have loved to have seen for Zelda was an Animal Crossing's New Horizons update. The game got new outfits, mushroom items, and even warp pipes for Mario. We would have loved to decorate our island as Hyrule. Close your eyes with me for a second and picture this. You've just hung up your Master Sword and Hylian Shield above your mantelpiece. Stepping outside dressed as Link, you hear the familiar sound of someone arriving to your island. Oops, you're late! You run through town, past your glowing Triforce statue towards the airport to pick up Zelda, before taking her out on a date to Brewster's for a glass of Moo Moo Milk. That sounds beautiful. The most heavily anticipated release for The Legend of Zelda's 35th anniversary was easily the HD remasters of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Again, probably in some kind of double pack. Zelda All-Stars, anyone? This rumour was fueled by many industry insiders over on Twitter, and it honestly got to the point where it really felt like a leak more than speculation. Andy Robinson from VGC literally said, and I quote, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are 100% coming this year. Now obviously Andy hasn't worked on these titles, but he is a far more reputable source than most others. These games obviously already exist on the Wii U in their HD forms, and we imagine they would require a lot less work to bring over than something like Skyward Sword did. Nintendo has ported all of their other big Wii U titles over to the Switch, so it's not really a stretch to imagine that these would eventually come over as well. We just can't imagine these two fantastic titles getting their last hurrah on the commercial failure that was the Wii U, especially seeing as though the work has already been done to upgrade them to HD. Nintendo, just like any other company, likes to make money. And we know that if they slapped these games on the Switch and charged a full $60 for them, they would 100% sell like hotcakes. They would probably still sell for a full $60 if they released them both individually, but people would probably be a little bit more upset about that. We would all buy them though anyway, wouldn't we? I know we would. What we expected here was some sort of update on Breath of the Wilds 2, and then for Nintendo to drop this double pack and say, here, have this while you wait. Almost exactly like they did with Skyward Sword. Maybe we could have had these earlier this year while waiting for the Breath of the Wild sequel near the end. So many of onlys. There is good news though. Just because Zelda's 35th anniversary is over, doesn't mean that all hope is gone for Twilight Princess and Wind Waker on Switch. We definitely think these games are still coming, 
especially considering the points that we just made. But obviously, that will now come at a little bit of a later date. If for whatever reason Breath of the Wild 2 gets delayed, and God help us all if it does, these games would definitely help ease the pain, and it would honestly be a pretty smart decision on Nintendo's behalf. It would be like them saying, sorry we screwed up, but here are two amazing games to help see you through. If Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't get delayed, we expect to see these games drop sometime in 2023. We just don't see Nintendo releasing them so close to what is the biggest Zelda sequel of all time. They weren't a part of the Direct, so they're definitely not coming first half this year, and any time in the second half just puts them too close to the Breath of the Wild sequel. So that leaves maybe summertime next year? And just because we've talked about it so much, yes, we would have loved for Breath of the Wilds 2 to be released in this past year. I have so much hype for that game, it is not even funny. But what we don't want is for Nintendo to rush it. Take your time with it guys, if it has to be delayed again in order for it to be perfect, that is okay. We were satisfied with the trailer we did get last year and we can't wait for more news on it, potentially at E3. What about you guys though? Is there anything we missed here that you would have liked to have seen for The Legend of Zelda's anniversary? Let's continue the conversation in the comments. Don't forget to follow all of our socials through the links in the description, and maybe you could share this video with a fellow Zelda nerd. That would help us out heaps. I'm Laura, this is Tom, and we absolutely love Zelda. For Zelda!